Today I'm going to show you how to make a dynamic beam layout like this. This layout is going to follow the profile of your floor with holes and irregularities wherever they are. You'll be able to change things like spacing, member profile. This is great for things like material takeoffs, modeling geometry as the design changes, or exploring design variations. Uh, it all relies on a grasshopper component called contour. So today I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, let's get started. I'm doing this off the cuff, so let's see if we can do it in one take. Uh, first, we're going to draw our floor plan layout for our beam layout. So let's draw something uh, that is not perfectly rectangular, but is planar. Um, so, some, I mean, imagine an apartment courtyard here. Very crude, but it'll get the job done, and it'll show off what this component can do. Okay, so we have, you know what? I'm gonna also add a hole just for fun. We have a big A here. Okay, so let's load the geometry into Grasshopper. Set multiple. Okay. I use a plugin called Telepathy, which I think is indispensable. So if you guys want to download that, you definitely should. It just helps with wire management and hiding wires between groups so it doesn't look like spaghetti when we're done. Okay, so this is gonna be called curves, uh, boundary. So let's start to do something with this. Let's make a boundary surface. So let's just make the surface and it looks like it did it. Okay, so let's make our beam layout now using contour. And I'm clicking Control Alt um, to locate it, it's in your transforms panel for some reason. I wonder why. Okay, so contour under transforms. Let's plug this in. And it's asking for a contour start point. I'm okay with having it start at the origin for now. The direction is going to be the x-axis. Uh, or let's, let's try a few different and see how this modifies it. Okay, so x-axis. A distance. Uh, let's so let's make another parameter called spacing. So zero one one hundred, and we'll call this beam spacing. Make a sender. Propagate it to this group, and plug it in, and we now we get a bunch of contour lines. So the x-axis is not working for us. So let's try the y. And this looks like it is the normal direction. So I guess it's perpendicular to the direction where the contours actually run. So that's interesting to note. Um, this spacing looks a little tight to me. So we'll um, something like 12. OK, so now we have a reasonable amount of paths here. And these are going to be the sweet paths for the beams. Now, we can control where the paths start from this contour start point. So I'm just going to demonstrate that. Uh, so let's make a point and have a slider on the y-axis. Okay. And drop that in and see how this does. Okay, so this is going to set the start path and it looks like the line intersects with the point. So this is a good way to set your first beam. Uh, I'm happy with the way it was. I'm just going to delete this and group all this together to propagate it. SE equals curves, paths. Bundle this together. And this is create sweep curves. OK, now we have our paths for our structures. So the next thing we need to do is to create a beam profile. So let's do that uh, in the Rhino space. Also, you could draw it in Grasshopper, but just for the sake of time, we'll draw it here. All right, welcome back. Now we have a full beam, which I fast forwarded through because that was painful. Um, let's make the flange. I think that'll work, actually. OK, so let's reference it in with another geometry component. And call this curve profile. 
and then propagate this. So um, let's make another subgroup here where we orient it. Actually, no, let's move it up here because we want these profiles to rest along the paths so that we can sweep them. Okay, let's drop a box corners component in here. Um, I like to use this sometimes uh, just to get the corner points of geometry. I know that A is going to be the one we want, um, or maybe it won't be. Uh, I think it's going to be between C and D, actually. So let's get the midpoint between those. I'm going to create a line, not the one I wanted. I'm going to create a line between C and D, and then get the curve middle of that. If you know a better way to do this, let me know. OK, and then we want to make an orient A plane. So let's just make a XY plane. I think that will work for our purposes. OK, so this is where we're grabbing the profile from. And now we want to put it on the paths. So I'm going to break this into its own group so that we just use this to create the orient A plane. And propagate this. Do you see how clean this looks? This is why I love this plugin. I need to get more people on this. Now we want a destination plane. So we're going to make perp frames on the curve. So we're going to reparameterize and put it at zero at the start. And that should put us at. Oh, wow, now that's interesting. Do you see what's happening here? So this is where all of our profiles are going to be. And these are the paths they are getting sweeped on. But if they're discontinuous, you'll get two paths. And I'm suspecting that our data tree is also going to reflect that. So let's take a look at the data here. OK, so we have a base of 0. Yeah, so these paths that are doubled up, like one of these, for example, it has two Orient B planes on it. It's just something to think about when you're manipulating stuff like this. OK, so let's orient it. Let's grab our profile. And move our planes where they should go. OK, so we're getting this uh, crooked. So that has to do with how we made our Orient B planes. Unfortunately, the x-axis is pointing up towards z, and the y-axis is this way. So we're going to have to actually construct the planes, which is something that I tend to do anyway. I don't love this perp frame because you get weirdness like this. OK, so let's delete that and reconstruct our B planes. Since these paths are lines, they can be coerced into vectors. So I'm just going to plug this into a vector and see what happens. So no errors. We can get a vector from a line. So this is going to give us the vector along the path. Now the other one that we want is z. And then we can get the cross product between the path vector and the z vector. And that will help us construct our plane. So we get to pick our origin, which is the start point of the path. We get to pick the x axis, which is the cross product, and the z axis, which is the, I'm sorry, the y axis, which is the z axis. So now, when we orient these members, they're going to drop in where they should be. OK, this is looking much nicer. Um, let's go ahead and sweep them now. All right, so we've got our rails, which are the paths. We've got our sections, which are the oriented beams. But now we're coming across an error, so let's 
look into the data structure. Sometimes um, these don't like lists, so I'm just going to graft it again so that everything sits in its own data tree, and now it's much happier with us. So here we have our beams with our custom profile. Not too bad, and as promised, we can change our spacing. We can change the profile. Let me turn my gumball back on. And the beams will follow. Now, just for some housekeeping, let's go ahead and put a bow on this. Uh, we're going to call this B reps beams. And now we can do things like bake this, we can export it, we just want to have it available. We'll package this up and call this uh, sweep beams. So go ahead, play with it. Let me know what you like, what you didn't like. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about it. Always happy to answer those. I'll be more present here on YouTube and LinkedIn with more tutorials, so be sure to watch out for those. Um, okay, until next time, I'll see you. Thank you for sticking around. Bye-bye.